Hello, my name is Alex Hutchinson, and in this video presentation, we're going to look to provide some insight and advice around helping law firms select and implement technology. So what are we going to cover? We're going to talk about some of the common problems that firms face when they're trying to identify and implement new technology. Uh, what are the typical approaches, traditional approaches that they take when trying to do so? Um, what are the pros and cons involved in that? And is there an alternative available? So the short answer is yes, there is. And the reason that we put this video presentation together is because when we are working with law firms, we are often hear the phrase, I didn't even know this type of thing was available. I wish we did. Um, that would have been useful for us to know. So we thought we'd just try and share this information. And now, who should be watching this video? I thought we want to be efficient with everyone's time. So should is this video for you? The alternative that we provide comes as a professional services business ourselves, where we are a project-based technology director for law firms. So the alternative uh, might be commercially challenging for smaller firms. So it doesn't mean that you won't get anything from the presentation, but it is more geared towards firms that are 50 to 100 staff that don't need a full-time IT director on their uh, books, but what they do need is specific specialist resource to come in and help them for a strategic project, and then they need them out the door. So larger firms, most larger firms will have IT project resource, IT director in play. Uh, again, the video is not really targeted for those size of firms. So the smaller firms and larger firms Feel free to watch this if you wish to do so, but it's really targeted at that middle ground of 50 to 100 staff, and that's where the alternative comes into play. So what do we mean by technology? Uh, it's a broad phrase, but we don't. when we're talking about technology projects, we're not talking about the infrastructure, um, the which should be a simple, stable, and secure environment that you log into every day. We're talking about all the tools, software, and applications that sit within inside that environment. So as a technology project, if you're looking to select and implement technology, we are referring to it as any case practice or document management system, whether you're looking to integrate a third party solution to bolt into those existing platforms that you have in play, whether it's specialist time recording, best of breed for billing accounting, document management, uh, whether you're looking at a client portal, a file opening, onboarding, um, specific specialist tool or piece of software, whether it's any bespoke development that you're trying to do to connect two systems or just to create something niche. We only need something to fix that small problem. Um, everything else works fine. Or even if you're thinking about whether how AI or legal tech could help your firm, that's what we're talking about. It's all to do with projects in those areas. So let's talk about some of the common problems that law firms face when they're trying to select and identify and implement technology. So where do they start? There's a massive sea of choice out there. It's, it's growing every day. How are you meant to know where to start? Um, you've got lots of changes going on with suppliers, and they've all got different directions and agendas. Some are some are acquisitive, some are small and niche, some are specialists for one different area, but how are they going to connect to others? Um, we've got if there's mergers and acquisitions taking place, what's their long-term plan? How does that fit with ours? There's certainly suppliers that are more relationship and partnership based. And there's other ones that are, this is our world, jump on the train and we'll take you there. But if you try and get off later, we're not stopping the train. It's very, you've got to understand who you are committing with and who you're committing to. Will it work in the real world? It's all right seeing a demonstration of this software, but will it work, operate efficiently in your environment, in your infrastructure, using the technology that you have or the infrastructure that you have, should I say, at the moment? Um, what other firms are using these tools, technology and software? Is that right for us? That can be comforting, but it can also be distracting because other firms will not necessarily make the right decision for one. Other firms might be making those decisions because they've got a different direction to you. And it's not necessarily the best barometer of, of who to choose. So um, how is it going to meet the needs of our people? There's a whole change management piece. There's a massive problem around um, how do we get the right people on board and get everything working so that our people are engaged with it and this whole project is a success. Who's going to deal with the implementation of this? How do we make that a success? Because we've got a graveyard of projects before us, technology projects, where the implementation's been a disaster and the training's not been completed properly. And we've had a couple of days out of the box of training. It's bored the pants off everybody and they're not really engaged and they don't really know how to use it on a day-to-day -day basis. So is this whole thing even going to be worth it? 
there's a lot of reasons why firms don't just change. And it's normally because they want to make sure they're making the right decision. Everybody's going to be involved on the other side of that decision and they want to make sure it's going to be worth it. It's a lot of investment financially as well, not to say the least. So um, another common problem that we see is there's actually a lot of pressure and responsibility on the individuals that are allocated this project. So they might be tasked with trying to find a new case and practice management system. It's not as simple as it sounds. It's a big challenge. It's a strategic change and it's a long term partnership. There's a lot of pressure for those individuals and the impact of a wrong choice is big. It's big. It's big in money. It's big in time. And it's big on the people that are involved in it internally. So people don't want to be just left with it to see how they get along. So there's a lot of problems involved. So um, a lot of challenges that, that people face in a law firm trying to select and implement the right technology. So how do they typically approach it? What are the traditional approaches and what are the pros and cons of these? Well, the first one that most people are aware of is a beauty parade. You know, we don't know what we don't know. So I've got to start somewhere. We've got to try and go and speak to people to find out what's available in the marketplace and see how that might fit for us. What firms tend to find is a lot of the time is they don't need everything that individual suppliers are offering. They only need a bit of it. So that tends to give them um, problems around a confidence of how to proceed and will it be commercially viable and efficient moving forward. There's also challenges around a conflict of interest with the information that's being provided. So you can ask a question around what you're trying to achieve, but the answers are only coming based on their individual solution. Is that the right thing for the firm? Is that the best thing for your firm and your people? Um, there's also often mis misinterpretation. So we, we really need this. Can it do that? Yes, it can. And then when you get further down, far further down the line, uh, you actually realise it can't do it or it kind of can, but it's nothing like the way that you wanted it to. And that means it's no good for you in a way because they, the, they can do it the wrong way now. So there's a lot of risk around beauty parades and the time involved and the resource. And once you start it, you've opened a process up. If you've got four or five individual suppliers that you're talking to, you've then got four or five individual people calling you trying to arrange meetings with you, meetings that are required that involve multiple people. And it, it, that, that journey starts. And there's a lot of time and resource that's required to manage a beauty parade. And it's not, it doesn't always deliver a very good return on investment at all. But you then get pressure externally from all these people ringing you, trying to help you move forward. And there's a lot of pressure internally then when they see things that they like, they, they will soon forget that the 90% the that they didn't like and people will now want the solutions that are available in the marketplace. Well, why can't we have that? Why can't we do that? And it puts pressure to make decisions. And what tends to happen with a beauty parade is you hit a fear or freeze element. So um, there's either too much fear to proceed because there's a gut feeling that something's gone wrong, something's not right, and you're not sure how to proceed, or there's just a, such an enormity of information that the whole thing grinds to a halt because you don't know what direction to take. You've onboarded so much information about possible solutions with technology that you don't know what to do with that information. It's not clear how to proceed. Um, all I would say with any of that is you've got to trust your gut instinct. If, there is a, if there's a feeling that you don't know, it isn't clear, it isn't apparent or obvious, then there's no business case really to move forward, in my opinion. So you've got to trust that gut instinct. It's normally to do with the process and the order of events of how you've got to that stage and jump into a solution before you've understood some elements first. So you've got to trust that gut instinct. It's not the fact that there's not something out there for you or you've done it wrong. It's just the order of events is incorrect. So another way that people try and approach it is by looking at a tender for technology. Sometimes they bring consultants in and they pay them a fee to go out to market and find somebody for them. You've got or some of the challenges carried forward from the previous alternative of beauty parades because they'll ask you to get involved in certain elements of that. But there's also, there's normally a huge raft of questions that go out to these suppliers. They, The ones that do engage with the tender process have um, template responses to a lot of these areas. So it's just kind of cut and paste for the majority of it because whether it doesn't apply, they just copy and paste that in. The same responses that they've done to something similar previously or even the same responses to the same um tender that they received from sim for the same consultancy six months ago. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot of value in getting somebody else to try and manage that tender process and that project, but there are issues and risks associated with the whole process of, of tenders. 
Um, not every supplier gets involved in those responses because they might have a good relationship with the person that's running the tender for you, or they might just not want to get involved in tenders. We know quite a lot of suppliers that won't even touch a tender because they just don't think it's a good use of their time. There's downward pressure on the commercials all the time for the supplier to engage with. So it's only working for the bigger ones that have got that, that can fund these. Um, it's a strategic way of winning business commercially because they can then, once you're in with them, it's a long-term play for them and they can try and make a margin longer term. It does put pressure on relationships. You need to consider that um, because you can't, it can't be about hitting them overhead with a stick all the time. You've got to be very careful who you're selecting to do this tender and how they manage those relationships and what they tell you versus what the reality of how they work with these people are. Um, and it can affect things after once the provider is in place. You know, it's very difficult then from a management perspective of a supplier to say, you know, we want you to do X, Y, and Z, or we didn't think this, or we're not sure about that. When they can say, well, you tendered it, you paid them to do it. They come in and beat us over head with a stick to get to get jump through this hoop, this hoop, this hoop. We've done all of that for you, and you picked us. So what, what else do you want from us? It, it's not necessarily the right way to approach it. Um, knowledge is power. I'm saying that because there's some tender processes that try and get acquire information on what the firm needs, but it needs a deeper dive than that. So, and partnerships are key to this. These are long-term strategic suppliers that you're going to be working with long term. You want to start things off on the right foot with them. So there's some insight into what the common problems are, some 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 um, traditional approaches and ways that firms try and select the right technology and implement it and why some of the challenges that we face along the way with that. So let me talk to you now in our presentation about an alternative. So an alternative is don't do it, stay as you are. Um, it might not be viable, so it needs to be considered. But the other thing is, if you are going to do it, don't do it yourself. The, there's, if you're going to outsource it, don't outsource it to a consultant that's going to just tender it with other people uh, or give you advice on how to do that. You want somebody that's going to work with you to take ownership of that project, bring the skills and expertise inside your firm and operate on behalf of the firm and run that project. And that is somebody that can run the project from cradle to grave on behalf of the firm. And that starts with understanding the strategy and direction. You need people that have got the skills to do that. But also, a lot of it comes with expertise. If you were thinking of it as a, say you had a you know, corporate and commercial firm, if it was a standard shareholders agreement, you might be able to get a junior um you know, a junior fee earner to do that work and charge them at a different rate. Uh, but if it was a complex M&A um, client or, or um, matter that you were working on, you want the people with the expertise that have gone through this process and realise what it takes to make it work. And not only that, but they've got the res they can bring the resource that's required to do so. Um, the way to do that, this alternative, is actually to have a technology director on a project basis. A lot of law firms don't know that you can do that. Uh, we've been in the marketplace about four, maybe five years now, but we've been branded as this around the last three. Um, and there is a lot of requirement in that middle area of firms that are 50 to 100 or you know, 50 to 120 people where they don't need an IT director, but they do need a technology director on a temporary basis to manage a strategic project like this. And that's where somebody can come in and deal with and is used to dealing with and they have a methodology that has your interest and they do it on behalf of the firm. So we're paid to come in and sit as a member of your firm. And I don't mean officially as a member of the partnership. I mean, come in and officially sit there and run the project with the best interest of that legal entity um, and make sure that the right things happen. And that involves understanding the headline strategy and direction. Where is the firm going? Where are you trying to get to? Speaking to all the people and acquiring the knowledge to make sure that the change management piece can take place building all the requirements for each area of practice and understanding what they need from it, what that needs to look like, what they need to keep from the existing system, what doesn't work, what needs to change. And then you can start looking at solutions, but have somebody that you're 
working with that can deal with a beauty parade, whittle it down to the ones that can actually deliver what we really need and then start bringing the firm in to look at the solutions that can actually deliver. And then somebody that will sit with you, sit with the firm and oversee that implementation and training that takes weeks, by the way, months in some cases, depending on the size and phases of it, to make sure that the implementation takes place exactly as what was agreed and meets all these requirements. And the training is tailored to deliver what the individuals in the firm need and also provides all the project management, the planning, the direction, the resource and everything that needs to take place to make this happen. So a lot of the reason why law firms struggle with in selecting and implementing the right technologies because they're using one of the two traditional alternative approaches which don't really work, they're flawed uh, to a degree, too high of a percentage of flaw to give them a success or an opportunity of success. And the other reason is they don't have the expertise or the additional resources required to actually do so. So it's important that people understand it's not necessarily to do with we can't get it right. It's difficult to get something right if you've not got the right tools and resource in place to do so. So when I say resource, when we come in, we're, we're typically, I started doing this on my own. When we're now working on technology projects, you're talking about me coming in as a technology director. We've also got a project manager and a project support and admin that support me on every project. It needs that amount of time and effort and resource and focus to own a project and move it forward through all those um, specific phases that need to take place. They need to take place in the right order and you can't jump from one to the other, otherwise it all risks the project. And someone needs to own it and manage it all on behalf of the firm every week to push it forward. And you need expertise to do that. You need expertise of dealing with law firms to do that, specifically for law firms. But you, there is an alternative where you can bring somebody in that will bring that advice get the hands dirty and own that project and be responsible for it. And that is a project-based technology director. Um, everything that we do is focused on the outcomes that are agreed at the start. So it's about sometimes agreeing that, that focus in phase one that is the strategy. Where is the firm looking to go? What is the direction of travel? What is the commercial um considerations that need to take place at a high level to make sure that any solution that is selected is in line with everything that is required for the firm and their people it may be that you don't need new technology sometimes the opportunities that are available within within the existing system can take you far enough long enough where you need to go with a much better commercial return and um change adoption and project timescale. So it's worth considering about that anyway. So it's all to do with everything being driven by outcomes on behalf of the firm. It's not a supplier that's selling you software. It's somebody that's doing it for your firm that involves your people, looks at whether your existing IT and tech can actually um, bring value or be leveraged to deliver results that are needed. Don't run you through a tender process and a beauty parade before it's relevant. And if it is, it's on a very small scale that's focused on solutions that can deliver for you. Um, and we get make sure that innovation, and we don't know what we don't know, is brought in at the right stage when we're looking at the solutions element so that you still get to see what's available in the marketplace, but all tailored towards what we're trying to achieve for the firm. It needs, in my opinion, external expertise, external resource, and a team to do so. So if you sit in that size of firm where you don't have a full-time IT director and a project team, you don't need one full-time. There's now an alternative where you can bring that resource specialist skill in for a temporary project-based period. Um, implementation and training is something that's part of the, the phases that we overview, and we handhold everything to make sure it's all tailored towards the requirements that have been agreed as part of that process we make sure that the training is tailored if you get five days training it's looking at what can be delivered in the five days training what do we want them to show us and what do we want to show the fee earners what do we want to show the secretaries you put time into that first so that when you pay for the supplier to deliver the training it's all tailored towards what you need there is a better way of doing it and what we tend to stand by is that if you bring the right expertise in and you apply the additional resource that's needed, you will make progress and you will get success. So what's this gone, what does this type of thing cost? We deliver this typically at less than what your partner rate would be for charging clients. So if you think about the people that you would typically get involved within a technology project, there is an alternative available that's commercially viable. Will we do it for free? No. Does it take cost? 
to do so, yes, but you need to think about how that offsets versus the progress that we can make in an hour um, because this is what we do versus the charge rate that we actually charge being less than what your partners charge and how much time, energy and billable hours would be burned if you were trying to manage this project yourself. So that being said, it's also looking at what's the success rate that we've delivered by doing this and this is what we do. So that's why we wanted to put the presentation together. That's the alternative offering that is available in the marketplace. If you didn't know it was there, I hope that's been useful. Um, some next steps. We're available to arrange an initial meeting. There's no obligation. You can have a remote meeting. Um, why would you want to talk to somebody now about this? All I'm saying is just there is an alternative in the market. Consider our lead times. We don't onboard more than two clients a quarter. Sometimes it's only one, depending on where each project is up to. And you also need to consider your project timescales. Uh, you're talking about months for these projects to take place and to, su to successfully conclude. They're broken into several stages. So it's always better to start a conversation early where there's no obligation, find out a bit more about what somebody can do for you. And if that's something that the firm would consider as a possible alternative. So think about whether there's a match. Do you, do you want to bring, do you like the thought of bringing in somebody specialist to help you deliver results and make this a success this time around. If you do, you know, maybe go back to the firm and think about why are we really trying to do this project? What do we want from it? What's the value to the firm? What's the risk or cost or implication if we get this wrong? And then just consider it really and whether you want to have a conversation. Uh, if you do, you can send me, I'll put two things in the, underneath the video. One where you can email a capability statement. You can email a request for a capability statement or we'll put it, it'd be easier if we put a link for you to download it actually. Uh, that's something that's an internal document that's normally shared at a partner's meeting to say, we've seen a video from this individual. This is what they do. Should we proceed with conversations? Uh, a better, more efficient way to approach it on your behalf might be to arrange an initial meeting where we'll discuss a bit about, tell me about your challenge that you're facing. What's your current position? Where are you trying to get to? We'll talk to you about how we can help We'll give you some bespoke information off the back of that around how we might help you with your particular situation and some headline commercials. And from there, you can decide whether the firm would like to look at an alternative of bringing in a project based technology director to help make sure that the next move that you make is a strategic change, brings your people on board and is a success. Uh, thank you for taking the time to watch. I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found uh, that, that you weren't aware that this type of service was available. And if so, if you'd like a call, there is going to be a link below for you to arrange a conversation around that. Thanks for your time and hopefully I'll speak to you at some point soon.